Hi, um, my name's David. I'm 54. I live in Plymouth with my wife. I'm a chartered engineer in, in the nuclear industry. We've got four grown-up children, three grandchildren, and uh, across our family, a variety of dogs and, and guinea pigs. We're all doing well, we're all healthy, we're all employed, we're all happy. But um, I have a, a chronic sense of unease. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have a voice on a platform because it seems that uh, it's not possible to, to readily speak up, to, to put a point of view across that might be contrary to what the media tells us and what people hear on the television and, and in the newspapers and read in the newspapers and hear on the radio. I served for 30 years, man and boy so to speak, in the Royal Navy Submarine Service, most of it at sea, underwater. I understand risk and how we reduce it to tolerable levels and then accept the residual. I understand danger, how to analyse danger posed by a hazard that may threaten me or my shipmates or my family or my friends. Um, it has been said taking a, a large metal tube filling it with high explosives, a nuclear reactor, high energy, electrical, air, hydraulic systems together with 140 people and taking it to sea and sinking it is not a natural thing to do. It's risky, but the risk is tolerable because we manage it. Because I'm an engineer, I investigate facts. Trust, but verify. In life, I have generally taken people at face value and trusted them. In my professional life, I check the facts first, gaining understanding and knowledge, and then trust the engineering. Since early this year, we have been told to trust the science. As is my way, I trust the people telling me this, but would they, why would they want to mislead me? But I will check the science. What I have found is the science is not a place. It is not robust, peer-reviewed, or verifiable. The studies conducted by institutions such as Imperial College are not robust, they have not been verified, and strangely seem to be funded by a combination of pharmaceutical companies, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, or both. Recently we have been told to wear masks in some places, shops etc, but not in others, pubs, workplaces. If the risk is so great, why not, why not, at all times, when in done, indoors in a public place? I have seen reference to two studies. One is a mathematical model conducted in China that simulates the impact of wearing a mask. But the reference points don't bear scrutiny with any kind of reality on the ground. The model assumes an R value of 4. It's never been that high, and in the UK government has recently estimated it to be between 0.6 and 1. This is an order of magnitude difference and would skew the results of any model. The other study used high-speed cameras to assess the effect of wearing a mask on the spread of droplets from sneezing or coughing. As expected, it showed the mask reduces the spread. But the study only looked at one person with different face coverings. It didn't look at the spread of different scenarios wearing beards, for example, or the impact of the microscopic virus particles that would pass through such face coverings if they were present. I have looked at statistics, reports and studies over the last few months and I have not seen any irrefutable evidence that the measures taken to prevent the spread of a disease that currently affects 0.3% of the population has been worth it. More people will be killed or injured on a road traffic accident this year. The loss is just not worth it. Livelihoods lost, businesses ruined, fatal illnesses not diagnosed, education decimated, anxiety throughout society, the apparent loss of the freedom of expression and thought. Ofcom will investigate any broadcaster that disputes the government version of the Covid truth. And then there are the masks. I suffer from anxiety especially in enclosed spaces such as supermarkets. This is as a result of trauma during my military career. It is not an issue 
I've been getting clinical help and I know the triggers to avoid. However, the thought of wearing a mask in a shop and not being allowed to take it off frightens me. So I don't wear one. I've printed off the UK government's exemption card and I carry it with me. But people stare and whisper and judge and assume and are generally unkind. They don't know my story. Why should they? This crazy crisis is killing kindness, fueling suspicion and driving us all to be a little less kind. This is not the society I want to bring my children, my grandchildren, up in. We are a fantastic group of people in, in our society with tremendous opportunities in front of us. But through circumstances and the stories we're being told through the media, we are suspicious, we are unkind, and generally we seem to be more more and more cruel to each other as this crazy situation drags on. I realise from watching the other videos on this platform that other people feel the same as I do. And fortunately, my wife and I are very much of a mind 